Right, so straight into the workshop today. Um, I thought I'd do a quick video on this. I've got a customer that sent me a stator of a Husqvarna SM or T610, and I think they fit the 410s as well. And it's the same stator fitted to the uh, Kajiva Canyons. A common fault with them is that the bolts on the start a clutch assembly come loose or the magnets break up and start mashing with your stator and as you can see this is the this coil here this pole here is the one that uh, is the ignition source coil and the rest of them set for these two and uh, the rest of them all charging coils um, and you can see that it's actually broken the um, the top hat right hand section off of it uh, that one's still intact, but this one's um, actually broken that. And it's also taken a bit of a whack on all the rest of them. Um, one of the poles was slightly twisted over, which was which was that one, the charging poles. But I've managed to uh, push that back to where it should be, and hopefully we'll get away with that by re-epoxying that up. So what I need to do, <coughs> well what I'll do is I'm going to make up a, take that lamination out down to the down to the bottom, um, and make another lamination out of a bit of steel, almost the same thickness. Um, it's not necessarily the same material. Um, I'm not too sure what the material is on that, but I've made the T section or whatever you've got the L shape section before for these stators and they've got the customer back on the road. I know it's not an ideal thing but it saves binning that whole thing and then paying I don't know 300 odd quid for a or whatever it is for a new one. So what I'll do is I'll make a little T section out of the bit of steel here and bond it on there uh, Reprofile it, it will file it all up and then wind the uh, coil wire on there on the winding machine. So, yeah, I'll make it out of that. Right, so I've just made a little T piece to go on the end of that. That there, whoops, fit on there. Obviously, I'll clean that, dress that all up. Just make so that side a bit shorter, and then bond it on there. Right, so I put a little slight curve on it, just to match the. Uh, You know the radius on there, just so it looks. So I'll glue that in place. Right, okay. So I've fitted the uh, angled bracket on there, or well, not bracket, but the angled uh, T piece, and bonded on there and reinsulated it. And I've also well, insulated it, I've epoxied over. I've epoxied the uh, damaged edges on the other poles. These two don't matter, as I said, because they're not wound. Um, and I've epoxied over that damaged piece there. So yeah, it's all ready now for putting some wire back on it. Right, I'm back in the office because this is where I do most of my winding anyway. Um, so yeah, I've put the charging coil wire on the poles. Uh, it's three phase, three phase. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine coils on it. So it's got three coils per phase on it. So that's all done. Forty-four turns. 1.6, 1.06 wire, 
with 44 turns on each pole. So yeah, that's that's all done. Now I've got to set the old uh, set the old coil winding machine up, and I'll pop that in there, and we'll wind the, um, the source coil. Very fine wire, and that is point. 1.4 millimeter wire that is very tiny wire so yeah get it set up in the machine and we'll get that to work I got it set up in the old home built coil winding machine to do the source coil and I've uh, set it all up and you get the old program going Do one pass on it, up and down, a couple hundred turns, set it all fares out. Okay, I've done two runs on it now, um, just had to make a minor adjustment to the amount of turns. Uh, with the thickness of wire and we settled at 92 turns per pass uh, 92 down 92 back up so we'll set that in a cycle now on the old machine so I've done what 376 turns so far so we'll set the loop on five Oop, five enter that and start the cycle going Uh, we'll leave that to do its thing for five five runs, and I can get on and do some else now. Do another alternator for another bike. Got just over three thousand turns on it now, um, so we'll set the machine, set the program to do four more. That puts just under four thousand turns for. Into that, and then start the cycle again. Right, we're coming up to four thousand turns now. There we go. That core's got almost, well, yeah, it has. It's got 4,000 turns on it. So, yeah, so the old thing's actually wound now, and uh, all we need to do is connect all the wires up. Do that in the workshop. Right, okay, welcome back. Right, the state is already, uh, already been finished now it's all been resined up uh, and or epoxy um, I'll use both on these I'll use a different one for them for the main charging cores than I do for the uh, source core so yeah it's all straightened out top piece has been added on there or on that side you see now it's all straightened out all wired up and put extra New wires on there. The only wires I didn't change was the ones on the pickup coil because uh, they're very fragile. They always are and they tend to break up the top so we always leave them as they are. They're pretty good. A bit stiff but just don't go bending them. It cracks the uh, insulation on them. But anyway, hopefully the customer will be happy with that. Um, I phoned him up and let him know it's done. 
all sorted out. So yeah, that'll be back in the post and hopefully have his bike back running by the weekend. Um, just hope he hasn't done any damage to the to the rotor. In fact, I think he may have bought a new one uh, from another supplier. So um, it's another one out of the way. Just another half a dozen to get on with. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Uh, catch up on the next one. I'll get another post another one up. When I uh, get time and enjoy the day. Catch you later. Bye.